Hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for Prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary for President! Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. There you have it. Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for Prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says, legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. As promised, we have an excerpt of Donald Trump on the Alex Jones radio show today. But first, let's take a look at some of the hit pieces that they're already coming out with, many of which don't have anything to do with the interview that actually took place. This one right here. Uh, this one is attacking Alex Orr's views on 9-11 Oklahoma City and the Boston Marathon attacks, even though nothing of the sort was even mentioned during the interview. Also, we have people reacting to uh, the interview on Twitter. Many comments here. We don't have time to go through them all. One of my favorites. Donald Trump and Alex Jones are geeking out about precious metals right now. Goodness, they use the Lord's name in vain. Did anybody doesn't know uh, rare, rare earth materials that are in your cell phones, your laptops, uh, all type of electronics, your TVs, are so serious that it was actually the subplot of the Black Ops 2 video game. People have considered armed conflicts over rare earth materials, and why we don't have them is actually something that's very interesting and you probably should know about, not that this person would take any time to learn about it. Also this one, once again, talking about things that didn't even take place in the interview. They're attacking Alex for wearing his Joker makeup when he made fun of Obama, and also uh, talking about a one world government. As we're talking about Obama, you can go on YouTube right now, as soon as you finish watching this video, and see Obama talk about, well, uh, we're trying to get to the type of uh, world government that we'd all like to achieve. 
one world government right there. Obama has said it. I'm not saying it's already happened. Uh, uh, George Bush Sr. talked about a new world order. Uh, Joe Biden talked about a one world order, new world order. So you can find all that stuff. But here's a clip of Donald Trump on The Alex Jones Show. And he joins us from Trump Tower in New York City. He is the leading 2016 Republican presidential contender. Donald Trump uh, again joins us. And I've got so many questions, but but first off, uh, Donald, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Great. Great to be with you. I, I've got so many questions, but you are vindicated. This has got to be the 50th time the last six months on the radical Muslim celebrating, not just in New Jersey, but New York, Palestine, all over. What do you have to say? They're still attacking you, though we've got Dan Rather on video. We've got New York Post. We've got Washington Post. We've got, uh, I mean, what's going on here? Well, I took a lot of heat, and I was very strong on it, and I held uh, my line, and then all of a sudden, you know, hundreds of people were calling up my office. I was the other day in Sarasota, Florida, and people are in line, and we had 12,000 people, which is fantastic. And the people were saying, many of the people from New Jersey, four or five people said, Mr. Trump, I saw it myself. I was there. They talked about Patterson, but they said, I saw it myself, Mr. Trump. I was there. So many people have called in, and, and on Twitter, at real Donald Trump, they're all tweeting. So I knew it happened, and I held my line, and people wanted me to apologize, and uh, we can't do that. People like you and I can't do that so easily. Now, we can do it if we're wrong, Alex. You apologize. I'd apologize if I was wrong. But they were celebrating, and they were celebrating the fall of the World Trade Center. I think that's disgraceful. It is. And that same week you were uh, reporting on that fact, we had two different international football games, soccer games, with the Turkish fans and others during the moment of silence uh, for the dead people in, in Paris chanting Allah Akbar and booing. So did that not happen too? Well, that happened and everybody saw it. That was a week ago and the players were out on the field and they couldn't believe it. They were embarrassed. They didn't know what to do. The coach and the managers, they all apologized, but it happened. Look, we, we have to deal with reality. And, you know, it all started because I said, we need surveillance. We need proper surveillance. We have people that truly are evil and they're coming from someplace, and you know sort of where they're coming from, at least the vicinity. And I said, we need proper surveillance, whether it's a mosque or any place else. We have to be surveilled, and we have to see what's coming at us, because we're not going to have a country anymore. Between the weak borders that we have, the pathetic and weak borders where politicians are afraid to do anything about it, uh, between all of what's happening with radical, you know, you, you look at what's going on, you have a president that doesn't even want to talk about you know, the radical uh, Muslim stuff. He doesn't want to mention the word. He doesn't want to say it. But you look at what's happening where we have a president that's over there celebrating global warming and trying to get everybody excited about global warming. Like, that's our number one problem. He considers that to be our number one problem. And our number one problem is what's going on where they want to blow up our cities and they want to blow up our country. That's our number one problem. Uh, it's now in mainstream news, Associated Press and others are reporting that it's a secret deal with Turkey, with the Germans, with Merkel, the, the admitted socialist, to bring in millions of radical Islamists. They admit almost all of them are Sunni that basically invaded Syria. They're getting their butt kicked by the Russians, so now they want to flee up through the north into Turkey. You said months ago, bomb the oil of ISIS, and the, and the mainstream media laughed because you said the sky was blue again. Now the Pentagon says that's the right thing to do. And now you've come out saying, quote, uh, it looks like uh, that Turkey's on the side of ISIS, close quote. Well, that uh, the next day, the Russians released satellite photos documenting that there are literally thousands of trucks coming up to the border at these huge terminals connected to Irgun, the president's son, making billions of dollars total off of this. Again, you're in trouble for saying the sky is blue. One thing with the oil, it's because sort of, you've covered it. For three years, I've been saying hit the oil because ISIS is getting strong and they're no JV, as the president said, and they're certainly not contained. But I said hit the oil and hit them hard. And they laughed at me. And they would put generals on television saying, no, that strategy wouldn't work. Well, after Paris, they started hitting the oil. And it does work. The problem is we've given them a two-year edge. They have billions of dollars. The now. Russians started hitting the oil for one month and ISIS is already rolling over. So Putin is following your, your strategy. You know well, Vladimir we Putin done, well. We should have done it two years ago, Alex. That's the only problem. I Donald mean, should, Trump joins this, us live. Can you speak to, as president, what your relationship would be with foreign leaders and, and, and what you know about uh, Vladimir Putin? Because all I know is, why are we starting a fight with Russia when they're not doing anything to us? 
Right. Well, uh, number one, and, and just to finish on the oil, by the way, I say hit the oil, but we should keep the oil. In other words, we should keep. We'll get ExxonMobil. They'll go in. We'll get other of our oil companies. We'll get some of the great oil companies. We bid it out. We should keep the oil. You know, in the old days, to the victor belong the spoils, right? We don't have that. We go in, we fight a war, and we leave. We get nothing, except we get debt, and we get deficit. That's all we get. Uh, I think I get along great with people. I mean, I will probably get along well with him, and if I don't, somebody else will, and who knows? You know, he's a difficult cookie. He's tough and he's smart. I was on the show 60 Minutes with him recently. Not together. I mean, we they did him and they profiled me at the same show, which was there. We were stable mates, right? But I think I'd get along very well with him. I think it'd do fine. Look, here's the thing. We lose with every country, and yet we don't get along with any countries. China is killing us. Everybody's killing us. China's just beating us to a pulp and trade. Japan, Mexico is killing us. And yet we don't get along with anybody. With me, they're not going to get so rich. Believe me, they're not going to get so rich at all. We're going to take back our jobs. We're going to take back our manufacturing. We take back our base. But they'll like us more than they do now. The more I research what you've actually said and done, it's amazing. You were the only leading American figure who openly said, do not go to war in Iraq. They had almost, what, 90% votes in Congress for it, bipartisan. You said, don't do it. Iran will take over. Uh, you said, I mean, look, you can say that today and everybody can say that, but you said that in 2001, 2002, 2003, when it was very unpopular because you'd done your research and had good advisors. How did you know that when almost no one else did? Well, first of all, I'm the most militaristic person there is. I'm going to build the military. If I win, I'm going to make our military so strong, so powerful that nobody's going to mess with us. We're going to take care of our vets and all of that. But I have to tell you, you have to know if you're going to go to war, you have to do it properly and you have to know what to do. I viewed it as this. Iran and Iraq were the same in terms of strength. And they'd have, they're constantly fighting. That's all they do is they fight, right? They go to war all the time and they'd move 10 feet left, 10 feet right, 10 feet left, then they'd rest. And then they started again four years later. This has been gone on for you know, forever. Years. Forever. And this is the way it is. I said, if you take out Iran or if you take out Iraq, either one, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. Well, we took out Iraq. And by the way, Iraq has the second largest oil reserves in the world. People don't even know that. So we gave, like, incredible. We took out Iraq. I said, you're going to destabilize. Well, and I said, and you'll know this, and you know this, and I appreciate what you just said, uh, then Iran is going to come in and Iran is going to take over Iraq. And they, they're just taking it over right now. As we speak, they're taking it over. Iran is running Iraq and very soon will be virtually going to be totally running Iraq, especially after all of the, you know, the deal we just made, which is the worst. So I said, keep the oil. And I said, if you're going to leave, you shouldn't have gone in, but they shouldn't have, they should have left soldiers behind like 20,000 or a certain number of soldiers. But if you're going to leave, take the oil. And I've said it. Then they left, they didn't take the oil. So ISIS got the oil, Iran is getting the oil, everybody's getting everything but us. So we lost thousands of soldiers. We spent $2 trillion in Iraq. We have wounded warriors who I love all over the place. And what do we get out of it, Alex? We had nothing. We had nothing. So, no, the French and the Germans are getting the oil and the Iranians are getting the oil. And you know who the number one customer for the oil is? Guess what? China. And that's it for our show tonight. But be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial you can get the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. And also don't forget the Alex Jones channel on YouTube where you can see all the great reports there as well. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. Infowarslife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. 
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.